Hi, welcome back to another Terranscapes video. Uh, this video follows the structures video, which I shot last night. I was hoping to shoot this consecutively with it, but I didn't finish editing that video until midnight. Why can't I remember how to do a blur mask? And why can't I notice what the opacity level is for the track? I don't know. That took me a stupid amount of time for a very tiny effect for something that most people will not even see. This is my problem. This is why terrain takes so long for me. In any case, um, today we're going to take a look at the vegetation on the cliff project and I'm going to share with you some of the uh, concessions that I made and some of the new uh, developments that I put into this. And I feel like the vegetation for this project has really blown open my options and variations for future pieces. Um, so I was really excited about that and um, I'll share to with you, share to you, share with you it's early in the morning, so follow me if you can. Um, I'll share with you uh, some of those ideas and um, hopefully you'll see some of their potential as well. So this should be a shorter video than the structures. Let's hope and let's go take a look at it. So I wanted to give you, of course, the way I've done in the past, a bit of an overview look at the piece. Now focus on the vegetation, not the structures this time. But um, I just wanted to start by uh, mentioning a sort of concession, if you will, to my decisions on placing vegetation, there really isn't a lot of areas that would normally be habitable for plants as, you know, it's pretty obvious that the amount of soil in these spots is really, really thin. But because this piece has so much surface, it's got such a big face on it, I felt really that I needed to add quite a bit of vegetation to it to give it some real pop. The customer had mentioned having a bit of vegetation on it as well. So I felt like we were probably in the same, you know, in the same mind of, of how to go about this. And of course the, the amount of vegetation varies quite a bit depending on the available surface area in a place like this, you know, where there isn't a lot of area at all to place it. Um, you know, obviously that reduces the amount. Um, and what I did is try to create natural patches where it looks like, I don't know, a little better to grow. So um, the grass is sporadically placed and then that kind of dictated or guided me on where to put the uh, plants themselves. So um, let's take a closer look and I'll show you um, some of these plants in a little bit more detail. So um, I wanted to give you a slightly closer view to give you a sense of the, mainly the palette of plants that have been used. I used a sort of limited palette, if you will, um, in the sense that I have quite a bit of a variety of plants now that I can tap into um, for, you know, adorning uh, terrain pieces. And I didn't want to get too crazy in the variety. Um, I mean, there are numerous types of plants on this, but I felt like it needed, mm, you know, not to go crazy in the, the kinds of plants that are on it. Um, one of the things that I was mildly concerned about were the number of greens in the sense that it, you know, that it's hard to break up that green color. Um, there are actually several shades of green, which I kind of think is probably actually the most realistic, but I wanted to have something to make it pop. And so I actually did um, quite a bit of flowers scattered about. Uh, and I thought, actually, they're so nice. They give, you know, such a nice pop. Um, and that really, I think, helped to compensate for that. I actually did go in and add in some custom-made flowers, and I'll show you those up close, um, where I've done some uh, purple. And I guess I'm kind of thinking this is having a bit of a spring theme or early summer. Um, and that, of course, means that I stayed away from a lot of those you know, burnt uh, colors, the burnt foliage and the burnt um, kinds of, uh, uh, what am I thinking of, like um, grass tufts. Uh, so I stayed with a, a more fresh plant look and I think it, it kind of works well, especially because we're contrasting against this very brown, uh, you know, sandstone type of coloring. So, you know, it keeps them from washing out from the actual background uh, and gives a uh, you know, really strong contrast. 
Um, so let's come, come in real close here and we'll take a look at some of these plants in real detail. So we'll start here in this little nook um, to show you some of the detail that's scattered really over the entire piece. Um, this shows you some of the uh, small flowers that I've added. Um, this is the uh, clover and dandelion. Um, you can see here that I have added some static grass. This is um, six millimeter static grass. It's very subtle. I was hoping it'd be a little bit stronger in terms of you know vertical height, um, but it does cast an overall shading to a lot of the areas that are flocked. And that was done you know in a patchy fashion over the flock. And so it gives it um, a visual shift uh, in color when you step back and look at the whole piece. Piece. And here you can see some of the uh, flowers that I made. Um, these are the uh, tufts, and this is the woodland scenic lavender flowers, which is really more of like a pebble grain. But when you step back and look at it as um, flowers, it actually looks uh, quite nice. And here you can see um, the buffalo grass from uh, Scenic Express, their Silphor Tufts, and I really liked that color. It's one of my favorite colors, but as I mentioned before, I didn't want to get into uh, too much of a, you know, an aged uh, burnt color. So this is kind of a nice summer uh, tuft. And here you can see a couple more variations of the vegetation. Um, this is um, actually some super turf that I applied to um, polyfiber to make some sort of creeping vine-ish type plant. Um, and actually that was something I haven't done before and I think it came out quite nicely. Uh, I think I could have done a finer gradation of tendrils coming off of these pieces, which you'll see as we move around the uh, structure. But at some point I had to call it enough detail as there's just so much surface area to fill and so many types of ways I could get more detailed. And here you can see um, a very, very new style of bush for me. This is made with uh, super sage, which is a dried plant product. And I've been wanting to use it because of that fine branching structure. And um, it's been so fragile that I had to come up with a way to uh, make it more durable. And actually people have asked me about it in the past. How can, I, how can we use more natural uh, plants? And what I did actually is I coated all of these stems with um, a mixture of paint and uh, you know, fine, uh, not a mixture of paint and matte medium. And that uh, gave me a an opportunity to thicken that coating and give it a bit more of a plastic protection, which gave it enough flexibility that I could then um, include some without fear of them shattering every time they were touched. So here you can see one of the other um, super sage plants. This one's a little bit bigger. And I really um, was afraid to go too, too large with it um, for fear of you know, getting more and more fragile as it increases in height. Uh, this is about th maybe three and a half inches tall. And, um, but I really, really love that branching structure. This is something I'm gonna be experimenting with quite a bit in the future. I feel like it's really opened up a whole nother class of plants for me to tap into. Um, and it really, you know, in the larger pieces, it really retains that fine branching structure even as you pull away from it. And so here you can see the second type of new sort of vegetation I worked on for this. Um, these are the wire branch uh, trees and I've covered them with polyfill and then flocked and added some uh, leaves to them. I've seen this style of tree done many times in the past and I never thought it would look good. And when I started to work on them, I realized actually this is not a bad technique. Um, if you're careful, you can still create negative space, which is so important for making trees look realistic. But it does require a sort of heavy uh, sealing effort and um, actually in some areas it looks like it got just a little bit frosted and I'm not entirely happy about that but I, at some point I have to stop revising this piece or I will never ever ship it. One of the nice things about this, however, is I'm sprinkling on some leaves and it just gives it a little bit of a contrast and a little bit of pop. This is a very common technique for people in railroad hobbies who want to um, pop out a ton of trees. And I will say this technique is a little bit faster than the technique I currently use. And I'm going to be exploring this for larger trees for other projects down the road. 
um, but I decided to go with this. I think it, it uh, works well for this kind of a setting. I think they look better than I had expected and it allows me to use these wire branches in a way that I haven't been able to use them in the past and fill them out much more than trying to add foliage to the few branches that are actually included in here. Um, so that's a, a new tree and there, uh, those are all scattered around the bottom basically of the uh, piece. And again here you can get a sense of how these textures are blending together, the static grass and the flowers and the uh, silk floor tufts. And I wanted to um, show you one more of those trees here. And um, of course you can see the um, vines a little bit closer, uh, you know, right there. Um, and you can see some of the polyfill sticking out there. Um, but you can see how nice that tree has um, that negative space included in it. I say tree, but this is actually quite small, especially for this scale. Um, but that kind of works for this setting as we wouldn't expect, you know, towering trees uh, on this uh, rather sparsely soiled surface. But this also shows um, one of the things that I've been working on and with some, you know, okay results, I think. This is part of the briar patch that is um, a Scenic Express product, I believe. And um, it comes actually in a very, very large section, you know, something really, really big. And I don't want to just lay down this giant mat, although in some situations that might look right. So what I've been doing is clipping off the branches and sticking them hither and thither around the piece. And we'll see if we can uh, get another one in here real quick so I'm not constantly cutting. Um, let's see here. If I whoop, come over like this and lean this a little bit more whoop, and come up a little bit like that. Mm -hmm. A lot of dials on this tripod. A lot of dials. And we can come right in. Woo! I'm very excited about this tripod for panning things. Um, but you can see here a ground view, ground level view of this piece of briar patch here. And um, I really, really think they look pretty good and add a whole nother, you know, style of plant to the uh, piece. But um, they tend to look a little plasticky if you're not careful. And uh, we'll try and come up here and see if we can get a more top down view of that so you can get a sense of how that varies. And um, are we focused? There we go. Hmm. Need a little help. Um, in any case, it's got nice uh, leaf texture. Um, it's got nice branching, but when you clip it, you have a lot of plastic area underneath that you have to uh, cover, and you got to give this a matte clear coat to um, break down that plastic look. But I think overall, it came out pretty well. And I thought it'd be nice to take one final look before we uh, leave the close-ups here of the vegetation um, to see the uh, ascension hill, if you will, and um, get a sense of what that coverage looks like. Because this piece, uh, this side, I should say, needs a lot of space for miniatures to walk. Um, so a spot like this, you know, there's not a lot of space for a really large base. I had to be a little more uh, careful in how I placed the vegetation so that I wouldn't interfere with the movement of uh, troops. And um, I think, though, that that kind of works as this is a, a fairly large cliff face and there's not a lot of, you know, sort of deep vegetation areas, if you will, for uh, plants to take root. So um, I think it looks pretty nice, actually. And I was still able to add um, a lot of, you know, small tufts and uh, flowers and, you know, that sort of idea. Uh, to give it a little bit more varied interest. And actually from this angle, you can get a sense also of what I tried to do with the top in that I tried to add a very, very sparse amount of uh, vegetation to kind of help transition it to the top. But I had to leave the bulk of the top bare so that um, you know future structures could be placed on it. And the customer and I have discussed um, possibly building future future pieces uh, that would be natural landforms to add to the top to um, give it more variability uh, for play and a little bit nicer look when there aren't any structures placed on it. So that gives you a uh, look at the uh, cliff face or I'm <laughs> the vegetation on the cliff. It's still early in the and um, a sense of how that all came together, some of the pieces that I've used, and some of the decisions on why I chose those 
as well. So that gives you a look at the vegetation. I didn't talk about the actual rock face because I talked about it so much in a previous video, work in progress video. So if you're new to the channel, um, welcome. And if you're a new subscriber, thank you very much. And uh, you know, feel free to go back into the back finger there, into the back videos. It's not too far back. And you can find information on how I um, sculpted and carved then painted that surface um, if you're curious. And um, hopefully when I edit this, I keep, I've been saying that, but this is a unique piece and I'm having trouble getting all the shots I want and there's lots of mistakes and I have to cut those out. So I have no idea how long these are running until I edit it. And uh, the, the structures when I was like, oh God, I had over an hour of footage. Basically I had to crop it down, uh, but there's lots of things that aren't actually anything. It's moving the camera or whatever. That's, you don't need to know that. It's just landscape, right? It's just terrain. So um, if, you, uh, if you have questions, I didn't show something well enough or you have cur curiosities about how I did some of these things, you know, feel free to leave questions and comments down below. I try to answer them all if I can. And um, you can always contact me at mike at terranscapes.com. I should say that during this project, I have been remiss in getting to my emails quick enough. Um, I usually try and say 24 to 48 hours, and there have been some that have been sitting three to four days. Um, bad me, bad business practice. So um, after this project is done, I'm getting back on top of it. 24, 48 hours. All right. Um, that's probably blowing out the mic. And I think that's it. Um, I have one more video to shoot. It'll be the electronics and I'll show you how I changed some of those. So uh, stick around for that and uh, keep your eye on the channel. That should be up relatively shortly after this, let's hope. And after that, I have a ton of videos I want to shoot and it's going to be a matter of the time available because I have so much back work and the store is opening on the 28th so people don't think I'm dead. And I have still some other custom work to do and write. So um, hopefully I will be getting out these videos uh, that I want to shoot uh, soon and at least a general miscellaneous update on everything that's going on and some new things that are going on as well. So uh, stay tuned to the channel for that. And uh, hopefully I will talk to you soon. Key concepts that I used and uh, I don't like that either. I blather, blather, blah, blah, blah. Can we do that again? <sighs> I like how I always refer to myself in the we. Split personalities. All right, let's do it again. Vegetation, take three.